Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the lateral ventricle. To begin with, this is a left lateral view of the cerebrum showing the ventricles of the brain. The ventricles are a set of communicating cavities within the brain. These structures are responsible for the production, transport and removal of cerebrospinal fluid which bathes the central nervous system. In this video, we will be learning about the lateral ventricle that you see right here. Now looking at the lateral ventricle in the anterior view, the lateral ventricles are two large cavities of the ventricular system of the human brain and contain cerebrospinal fluid. The two irregular cavities are situated one in each cerebral hemisphere. Now each lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle of the cerebrum that you see right here through an interventricular foramen or the foramen of Munro. Now each lateral ventricle consists of a central part and three horns that is the anterior horn, the posterior horn and the inferior horn. Concising the important points under the introduction to the lateral ventricle, lateral ventricles are the two largest cavities of the ventricular system of the human brain and contain cerebrospinal fluid. The two irregular cavities are situated one in each cerebral hemisphere. Each lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle through an interventricular foramen also called the foramen of Monroe. Each lateral ventricle consists of a central part and three horns that is anterior, posterior and inferior horn. Now let's learn about the central part of the lateral ventricle in detail. The central part extends from the interventricular foramen in front to the splenium of the corpus callosum behind. Now let's learn about the boundaries of the central part of the lateral ventricle through this diagram which is a coronal section. So firstly the roof of the central part of the lateral ventricle as you can see this is the central part of one lateral ventricle and this is the central part of the other lateral ventricle. So the roof is formed by the under surface of the corpus callosum. As you can see this is the body of the corpus callosum and the roof of the central part of the lateral ventricle is formed by the under surface of the corpus callosum. Looking at the floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle right here and here it is formed by the body of the caudate nucleus, this and this, the stria terminalis right here, here, the thalamostriate vein, the choroid plexus and the upper surface of the symmetric half of the body of the fornix. Moving on to the medial wall of the central part of the lateral ventricle, it is formed by the septum pellucidum right here and the body of the fornix. Now let's look at the choroid fissure that you see right here. It is the line along which the choroid plexus invaginates into the lateral ventricle. It is a C-shaped slit in the medial wall of the cerebral hemisphere. It starts at the interventricular foramen and passes around the thalamus and the cerebral peduncle to the uncus. Its convex margin is bounded by the fornix, the fimbria and the hippocampus, while its concave margin is bounded by the thalamus, the tail of the caudate nucleus and the stria terminalis. At the fissure, the pia mater and the ependyma come into contact with each other and both are invaginated into the lateral ventricle by the choroid plexus that you see right here. This is the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle. Concising the important points under the central part, this part extends from the interventricular foramen in front to the splenium of the corpus callosum behind. Looking at the boundaries, the roof is formed by the undersurface of the corpus callosum, the floor is formed by the body of the caudate nucleus, the stria terminalis, the thalamostriate vein, the lateral portion of upper surface of the thalamus, the choroid plexus and the upper surface of the symmetric half of the body of the fornix. The medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum and the body of the fornix. Now looking at the choroid fissure, it is a line along which the choroid plexus invaginates into the lateral ventricle. It is called the choroid fissure. It is a C-shaped slit in the medial wall of the cerebral hemisphere. It starts at the interventricular foramen and passes around the thalamus and cerebral peduncle to the uncus. Its convex margin is bounded by the fornix, the fimbria and the hippocampus 
while the concave margin is bounded by the thalamus, tail of caudate nucleus and striae terminalis. At the fissure, the pia mater and the ependyma come into contact with each other and both are invaginated into the ventricle by the choroid plexus. Now let's learn about the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle right here. It is a part of the lateral ventricle which lies in front of the interventricular foramen and extends into the frontal lobe. It is directed forwards, laterally and downwards and is triangular on cross section. Let's look at the boundaries of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Anteriorly, it is bounded by the posterior surface of the genu and rostrum of the corpus callosum. The genu and rostrum are the parts of the corpus callosum which is a commissural fiber that connects both the hemispheres of the cerebrum. Now this is a coronal section of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Looking at the roof of it, the roof is formed by the anterior part of the trunk of the corpus callosum. The floor is formed by the head of the caudate nucleus and the upper surface of the rostrum of the corpus callosum. And finally, the medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum and the column of the fornix. This is the medial wall of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Tio. Concising the important points under the anterior horn, the part of the lateral ventricle which lies in front of the interventricular foramen and extends into the frontal lobe is the anterior horn. It is directed forwards laterally and downwards and is triangular in cross section. Looking at the boundaries, the anterior part is formed by the posterior surface of the genuine rostra of the corpus callosum. The roof is formed by the anterior part of the trunk of the corpus callosum. Floor is formed by the head of the caudate nucleus and upper surface of the rostrum of the corpus callosum. And the medial wall is formed by the septum pellucidum and column of fornix. Moving on to the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. It is a part of the lateral ventricle which lies behind the splenium of the corpus callosum and extends into the occipital lobe. It is directed backwards and medially. Now let's learn about the boundaries of the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle through this diagram. Firstly, the floor and the medial wall is formed by the bulb of the posterior horn raised by the forceps major and the calcare evis that you see right here which is raised by the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus. This is the calcarine sulcus and this is the anterior part. Now the roof and lateral wall of the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle is formed by the tapetum fibers of the optic radiation as you can see right here. Concising the important points under the posterior horn, it is a part of the lateral ventricle which lies behind the splenium of the corpus callosum and extends into the occipital lobe. It is directed backwards and medially. Looking at the boundaries, the floor and medial wall is formed by the bulb of the posterior horn raised by the forceps major and the calcare evis raised by the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus. The roof and the lateral wall are formed by the tapetum fibers of optic radiation. Now finally, let's learn about the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the largest horn of the lateral ventricle. It begins at the junction of the central part with the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle right here and extends into the temporal lobe. Now let's look at the boundaries of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. The roof and the lateral wall are formed chiefly by the tapetal, the tail of the caudate nucleus, the striae terminalis and the amygdaloid body. The floor of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle is formed by the collateral eminence which is raised by the collateral sulcus that you see right here. This is the collateral eminence and the hippocampus right here medially. Concising the important points under the inferior horn, this is the largest horn of the lateral ventricle. It begins at the junction of the central part with the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle and extends into the temporal lobe. Looking at the boundaries, the roof and the lateral wall are formed chiefly by the tapetum, the tail of the caudate nucleus, the striae terminalis and the amygdaloid body. The floor is formed by the collateral eminence raised by the collateral sulcus and the hippocampus medium. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of lateral ventricle as well as notes on other topics of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology, pathology and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.